Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. And this is the program Human Humane Architecture. The normal, co the normal host for this program, Martin Despang, is currently on vacation for the summer. And so I'm co-host DeSoto Brown, who is sitting in for him. And today we have a guest who is an architectural expert, who is Don Hibbard. And we're going to be talking about a famous architect named Hartwood. So welcome, Don, and thank you for being here. Thank um, you. Don, let me ask you quickly before we get started into Hartwood. What is your former role? You're a retired man now, and I'm very envious of you. But what did you used to be? I was the administrator for the State Historic Preservation Office for 23 years. And then once I got out of that, and I've been doing architectural history consulting since that time. And you're uh, enjoying it, I bet. Yes. Yes, you are. It's very good. Okay, so tell us about uh, the, the person we're going to be talking about today is an architect named Hart Wood. And right. why don't you just get started on letting us know who he is, and we're going to look at a lot of the work that he did, as well as contemporary work from the time period that others were doing here, correct? Uh, sort of, yeah. Okay, all right. Okay. Take it away. Okay, you will start. Uh, yeah, we have our first slide. And in the background and, is one of the famous buildings. There's, there's Hartwood. Yep, that's Hartwood. Tell us about and, him. And so Hartwood was born in 1880 in Philadelphia. His family moved out to Kansas at an early age. Then he, his father was, uh, you know, like, uh, they call it hand graining when, when you paint wood so it looks oh, yes, like it was yes. grained. Uh, yeah, yeah, Yolani yeah. Palace has that. His father did that. Oh, okay. And uh, so then he went on to, uh, Colorado, and he started working as an architect there, an architect's office, and then from there to San Francisco. And he met C.W. Dickey in San Francisco, and uh, Dickey convinced him to go into partnership with him in Hawaii in 1919. Mm -hmm. So then he moved out here to Hawaii. Okay. Next. And, yeah, and Dickey, by the way, is a famous architect in his own right as well. Oh, yes, by far, by the, far. the preeminent exactly. pre world. Exactly. Yeah, architect. so next slide. And one of the first projects that they worked on. Uh, was Waioli Mission in uh, Waioli on the island of Kauai. Mm -hmm. And this was built by Dickey's grandfather. Yeah, right. And uh, Dickey will use it mainly, this is his inspiration for what he called the, the double pitch hip roof, right. the Hawaiian roof. Correct. And next? Which my house has. Okay. It was built in about 1930. Okay, very good, yes. And here's another view of the mission today. And uh, while Dickey was concentrating on the roof, uh, Hartwood was infatuated with the lanai underneath. Okay. And uh, Dickey went back to California, and lanai, or rather, uh, Wood was, as the newspaper said, left to row his own canoe. <laughs> and <laughs> Which he of, did. Yes. yes. And uh, one of the first uh, commissions he got was with the Lihui United Church. Next. Next picture. And uh, again, still on Kauai. Yes. Yeah. So and, let's go to our next slide. And, uh, well, if we got to our next slide. Yes, maybe uh, it's gone. There, <laughs> there it, it is, is. There it is. And he designed this building, which, as you can see, he had, this is a gable roof rather than a hip roof, but he yep. has the long, right. sloping roof with Correct. the lanai underneath. Correct. And so he also started to use other elements. He, in the uh, little vertical element, he put uh, lava rock, which is yeah. the first time that they start really using uh, local yes. materials uh, in a big way. Correct. He also has some concrete in there. Uh, also, you can't really see in this picture, but uh, on the the tower, there's uh, uh, plantation machinery that he uses to operate the bell. Oh, okay. And uh, and the little window there is called a a Gemmel window. Gem yes, which of course we all knew. Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. And, and so and I, I just, in case you weren't familiar with it as much, I threw in a couple examples from Honolulu as well. Okay. And um, what next, year is this? This is 1921. Okay. Oh, there it is. You mean a better close up? I forgot yeah. it was there. Next. Yeah, that looks very church like that. And yes, and here you can see there. the Gemmel window in McKinley High School. Correct. And you, so you have the two windows with the round arches, and you have a column in the middle. Right. And looks Gemmel, Italian to me. Uh, this is Spanish, actually. Okay, okay, but that looks like something you'd see in an Italian. Uh, you could very easily uh, too, as well. Middle Mediter Ages sort of building, right? The Mediterranean will pick up. Yeah, on that. okay, okay. And then uh, this is by Lou Davis, and then the next one here's one. Uh, Emory and Webb puts it also in the top floor of the Advertiser Building. Okay. Here a more uh, 
industrial style window, but they still keep it as a pair with the column Correct. separating them. Yeah, the decorative element of the column in yes. between. Yeah, I was going to say that looked like the uh, federal building, the old post office. Oh, almost, yes. Yes, it does. Similar time period. Yes. Okay, next. Uh, here is the lanai uh, on the uh, uh, parish hall, as you can see, has the lava rock. It has right. the bifold doors, so the yes. whole place will open up, Correct. which is very uh, conscious of as far as ventilation and cross Correct. ventilation. And this is all before air conditioning, mind you. Oh, so this very is much when before. one had to do these things. Yes. And a plain co colored concrete floor, stained yes. concrete floor. Yeah, this one's not stained. I think it's painted, as you can see. Okay. It's getting uh, Oh, it's getting worn off, yes. right. I think this is before stained concrete. Yes, it is. Yeah. Okay, next. And he comes back to Honolulu and he'll design the Christian Science yeah. Church on Punahou Street. And again, uh, you can see on the side the sweeping roof going down, Correct. covering the lanai. So he's taking the same concept and using yes. it again. Yes. Next. And the bands of, oh. uh, yeah. And, yeah. And, and what I was going to say here was there again is the, the, the native lava rock being used, but it's got those decorative uh, horizontal bands through right. it, so it's not just a plain wall. Right, it was a very distinctive handling of the material. Yeah. And, uh, and also, you'll notice the windows, watch those, you will see them again later. Okay. okay, okay. Next. That was what, 1924? 22. 22, yeah. okay. And then later on in 1927, he'll start incorporating Asian yes. motifs into his work, and he's really the first one to start integrating Western and Asian elements together. And that's very, that is a very Hawaiian thing to do, and I don't mean ethnically right. or culturally Hawaiian, I mean local Hawaiian generic right. style. Exactly, right. yes, and so here's the, uh, the uh, Chinese Christian Church on King Street. Next. Which is a very beautiful building. He'll use it again at Gump's uh, down in Waikiki. It, Gump's is now there, but it no longer has the spacious lawn in front. No. And a matter of fact, he deliberately built it this way because he's trying to say uh, Hawaii is more of a hospitable place, uh, friendly place, and we, he starts to try and make his commercial buildings look more like residential buildings. Which this does. Yes. And may I also point out that the word Gumps, which you can see on the facade of the building, which is facing towards Kalakaua Avenue, is the first neon sign in Hawaii. Oh, that I didn't know. From from when oh. it opened. And, oh, wow. Um, I didn't. Gumps was built... Uh, at the same, just about after, I think the year after the Royal Hawaiian Hotel opened. And I think the right. idea was because this new, more expensive clientele, higher clientele is mm -hmm. going to be here, we will build a store that can, in fact, accommodate those people. Right. And Gump's was actually a San Francisco Correct. store. And Honolulu was very proud that they had a Gump's before Los Angeles. Oh, and with good reason. <laughs> yes. And it had a lot of high end merchandise, too, yes, this place. It did. Next. And then. Dickey and Wood will com uh, combine and do the Alexander and Baldwin building, mm -hmm. which again is going to combine like the Hawaiian roof on yep. top and then the terracotta walls are all in Asian, yes. mainly Chinese motifs. Correct. That's right. So, That's right. And again, he will be the first one to landscape in front, yes. put the coconut trees, yes. the uh, sidewalk was stained green. Yes. And uh, so very yeah. much. And then across the street, the Dillingham Transportation Building also transplanted mature coconut trees too. Right. And so Bishop Street was the first time that that got done, which is now very commonplace. Correct. Right. Next, in the 1930s, he was very lucky. He uh, started teaming up with a man named Fred Ork, who was the head yes. of the Board of Water Supply. The yes. Board of Water Supply in the late 20s came, had a big scandal because they yeah. were taking off money, and we almost uh, had a, a water shortage yes. in Honolulu. Yes. And so the Board of Water Supply was formed to start managing this and take it out of the hands of politicians. Correct. And Ort and Wood started to team up together, and uh, it's very good. They uh, mentioned that they start a policy where they said they believe that beauty need not be sacrificed to utility. Right. And that beauty costs no more than ugliness of neglect, save perhaps a little more thought and planning. And, and that is actually kind of based on the Gump's store slogan, which was good taste need cost no more. Yes. Oh, okay. Very there good. There you go. I, okay. And so he'll design several uh, pumping stations for the yeah. uh, city. This is one. This is in Makiki. You'll notice this is in black and white, as is the next one, which we can see, uh, the Nuwano aerator. And again, this is up in Nuwano, which the water, su water supply did and hum uh, wood developed. 
I put these older pictures in because now, rather than talk about, oh, what beauty, that water yes. can enhance your life and the beauty in yes. your surroundings, now the Board of Water Supply broadcasts, water is a maintenance problem. And don't use too much of it. Yes, and they'll... They filled in the pond. Yes. There was a little wading pool at yes. Kiki. They've taken that away. Maintenance, maintenance. And, yes. Uh, it's yeah, and I think this is, a good, this is a good point that the, the, this is a good time to also mention. The Board of Water Supply for many years made a point of making their pumping stations architecturally distinguished as well as taking care of the grounds and making their grounds and the well-maintained grounds around their pumping stations a focal point of a, a, really a real community asset. Exactly. They have not been able to keep that up in recent years, as you just mm -hmm. alluded to. So while many of these buildings still stand, they no longer have the maintenance that they used to, and they definitely do not have the landscaping that they used to. And they've also shifted from urging us to use water and beautify our lives mm -hmm. to, in fact, de-emphasize that and use less water, save water, conserve water, plant zero, zero escape plants rather than plants that need a lot of water. So we've had a real 180 from the time period we're talking about here in terms of decorative featured uh, community assets to they're still there, but we no longer show them off the way we used right. to. So now I'm gonna get into the second part of our talk more yes. or less, uh, which is what Docomomo is involved with, yeah. mainly post-war architecture. Yes, uh, yes. Wood will work up until the 19, through the 1950s. Uh, he'll be 70 years old in 1950, and I think... And still going. Okay. Yes. Are we ready for our next slide? Yeah, let's go to our next slide. And I'm just go back to this. This is the parish hall in Lihui. Uh, from 1933 on, he was talking with Elsie Wilcox about building a yeah. new church for the United Church in uh, Lihui. And finally, after World War II, the church decides to move forward, and they hire Hartwood to come back and do that building. Appropriately. And so next. And I think that, uh, yeah, and, and we'll, we'll get back to that, but I, I'm seeing some elements in that early building that we're going to see later on in the 50s and 60s as well that he's kind of pioneering, but go, Correct. go ahead. Yeah, I just throw this in to show you what Hart would look like at 70 years old. And at one time I thought that was old, and now, now we don't re think so that, Yeah, <laughs> now that we've gotten old, we don't think about that anymore. Correct. Okay. Next. And uh, so here's the building that he will build uh, for the Lihui United Church. and. Uh, I found a really nice quote from 1938. Uh, the Honolulu Star Bulletin ran a, art, a special edition talking about housing in Hawaii, and especially okay. modern housing yeah. in Hawaii. Yeah, all right. And everyone they had around six architects do stories. Yeah. And uh, all of them were talking about how modern, how progressive things are. Yes. And Hartwood took a slightly different slant. Yes. And he starts off his article by saying, recently, Someone bemoaned Honolulu's loss of charm. Uh, Those of us who have been here longer realize that this pliant was not without some merit. Yes. That Honolulu has lost some of its charm is undeniable. That for this there are some compensations is no doubt also a fact. This is true. It seems natural to deplore the vanishing of the good old days and to forget the present good. Well, yeah. One does not have to go back very far. Remember, this is 1938. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> to recall a time when the best buildings in the islands were almost completely lacking in architectural pretensions yeah. and deficit, if not devoid of modern conveniences. Houses not watertight, insufficient light, and inconveniently and uneconomically planned. City streets and country roads largely in the horse and buggy days. Water supply inadequate, infrequent deliveries, boat service slower and less comfortable, and in many other ways, the comforts and conveniences which we now take for granted were absent. Mm -hmm. And yet, the nostalgic call which most of us feel is for a certain something that is not without substance. Well, uh, and I think that's still valid. Yes. And, and of think, course, people are talking about, oh, but my God, Honolulu today. Well, as you just pointed out, 1938, he's talking about being nostalgic. 
Right. There are people now who are nostalgic for 20 years ago. Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. And, and he goes on, and he'll say, in fact, this nostalgia is of the utmost value, for it represents the essence of life in the islands, that which embodies the charm, friendliness, simplicity, and comfort of Hawaii, which is the lure that calls and recalls countless thousands to its shores that causes unnumbered hosts to sing its praises and that binds us, its fl favored inhabitants, with invisible and insoluble bonds to this aloha land. Such things may be elusive, they may be intangible, but they can be expressed in buildings. They should be expressed in some measure in all island buildings. Yes. And it is one of the architect's civic obligations to the community to see that they are. In the glitter and glamour of movie land architecture, <laughs> we are apt to forget that weightier things of real life. It is up to the architects of the islands to steer a straight course, to keep our heads, to keep abreast of progress, but not to forget the rich heritage of the past. In other words, to consciously strive to retain in our work the charm, friendliness, and simplicity that is Hawaii. Now, you're going to show us that he managed to do that? Let's uh, see. I'll see. Let's we'll see. see what he did. Let's do. see, yes. Let's see what I think he did do. Does. Okay, next. And so this church, I think, is what he tries to embody. He right. looks back to yeah. the parish hall next door. You can see the swooping roof, the lanai again. Yeah. The simplicity of the lava rock. Yes. Uh, but now he has a modern steeple. Next yes, he slide. Does. Yeah, next. Which is uh, totally distinctive and unique, his own design. Yeah. And uh, all churches have to have a vertical element. This is the one. And, yeah. uh, and it, it's a new handling of, of the genre. Next. I agree. But at the same time, he keeps. The lanai yeah. with the big columns. Yeah. Now you have acid stained floors. Yeah, there we go. And again, the doors are now simpler than the other doors were all panel doors. Now they're flush, yes. flat, but still functioning same, the same, same way, way, opening it up. Right. Uh, next, he has stained glass windows inside, but now he's handling them in a modern way, yes. which you would not see before. Right. Correct. And you'll notice, though, there's a little, little window. window. Yes, he's going back to his earlier, Correct. so he's melding. The past with yes, the he presence. Is. He's trying to bring the tradition into the modern era, but Correct. keep them both going. Right. And so right. I think he's done a very nice job with this building. Right. And uh, next. And I was going to say, well, yeah, there we'll keep going. We'll keep going. And there's the building. Yes. And so it, it's a very handsome. It's modern, but yeah. traditional at the same time. And a very unusual shape. Yes, because of the skewed hip uh, gable right. roof. And, and the uh, asymmetry of it. Too. Yes, yes, yeah. very true. And then the wing in the back is where it has all the offices, mm -hmm. where in the Christian Science Church, actually, you'll have another wing on the other side that has, uh, one side has lanai, the other side has okay. the church offices. Right, correct, and correct. So, but it's symmetrical. Yes. Right. So next. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. I certainly recognize that. Yes, and this is probably what's considered his best work after the war. Yeah. He, uh, again, is working with Fred Ort and the Board of Water yes. Supply. This building is actually on the drawing boards in 1948 and 49, mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't get dedicated till after Wood dies in 1957. Wow. So it shows you how long government takes sometimes. Yeah. But uh, it uh, was by far, again, a very modern looking building. Yes. And uh, at this time, modernism was very much opposed to ornamentation. That's right. And, uh, but Wood manages to be very subtle and yep. work very nicely with the building. Correct. Uh, the Brie Soleil yeah. was, you and Martin did a whole show yes. on that. Yes. And uh, again, very uh, forward, accommodating, addressing the climate, addressing the sun. Yes. And next. Yeah, and it, it, but it has the detailing of the uh, the ornate. It's it's kind of an ornate screen. Oh yes. In that it's open, but it's got the detailing on it that is separates it from just plain smooth concrete. Correct. I'll show you. Yeah. And actually, um, believe it or not, this is metal. The screen. I I was going to just say, what is it made yes. of? Because I was now, never. I clear. was shocked. I I, I was. 
taking the pictures the other day. I said, oh, it's I, not even attached to the building yeah. or to the wall. Right. It's so that, set that's, off from the so wall the screen and the windows. is on the left in this picture. Yes, and exactly. And the, the facade of the building yes, is on the right. all the windows for the offices right. and stuff to the right, which is shielding. Yes. And I hit it. Oh, it's not concrete. <laughs> <laughs> the building is, but this is but metal. But this is not. This is metal, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I thought that was very interesting. Next, yes. please. There and they are. here it is. Yeah. And you can see... The sunscreen is working in two ways. He has the horizontal yes, sunscreens, yes, yes. and he also has the vertical, the vertical fins. That's right. But mostly vertical fins are used solid, but right. wood breaks it up. Correct. And he starts to put it into a Chinese yes. sort of brick bracket exactly. pattern. Exactly. And yes. Next, there's another Asian theme, right? Yes, exactly. And here you can see that. You can see where he's connecting the pieces. It's all very definitely yep. Asian inspired. Yes, it is. And, yes, uh, it is. So he's. Starting to, he's still trying to tell people, yes, we are a multicultural That's society. Right. That's right. This is Hawaii. You're not going to find this anywhere exactly. else. Exactly. And so while we are going into the modern age, we're using right. nice metal here, concrete, right. Right. but we're also reminding ourselves of our heritage. Exactly. Next. And bravo to him. And here's the front, which is another very masterful part, where he has the water fountain in front. Yes. He has uh, the... Board of Water Supply motto yes. in Hawaiian. Yes. And then also the entry, the, the portico is very much a Japanese style. I was roof. just going to say. And, and it also has that beautiful slick marble facade to the left. Right. On which it says Board of Water Supply. And it's got sort of these vertical striations of green that go with the green of the building. Exactly. And actually, too, you'll notice the steps and everything else has the green to yeah. be reminiscent of, of the Board of Water Supply. Right. And uh, next. Yeah, that's their distinctive color. Yeah. And here you can see again. And you can see he could have opted for two columns, but no, he's making an Asian motif here. Yes. And it's not out of wood, but it's out of metal. And uh, so he's using new things, and he's actually, it's not quite the design you would use in wood, but it's close, and it's Correct. reminiscent. It'll remind exactly. you very much. Yes, right. And, and it's got the contrast of the white painted concrete and the wood-like color of the metal, right. that contrast is also uh, what you'd see in a Japanese building of a white plaster with the contrasting dark wood. Correct. And what I really like about this building along the uh, eave line set back in the fascia there, um, next. I see a little detailing. Oh, yeah. wow, look at that. Yes, he has a little yin yang. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, that obviously is not something that's necessary. No. <laughs> and it, probably some strict modernists would shun it. <laughs> but it's well, there, and it's a nice little feature. <laughs> and it's also an indication of the level of detail that goes into some of the buildings, which appear to be very plain and austere, which you are not likely, I think, today to see because of the expense. Right, exactly. And so it, this is something that we're probably not mm -hmm. going to repeat very frequently, particularly on buildings that are mostly utilitarian, because it costs money. Right. And we can't afford it. But again, how much, when you're having, um, well, now it's a lot more, but um, this was probably a million dollar building or so. Yeah. You know, what, what's this oh, exactly. percentage? It's, exactly. It's minor, yeah. but yeah. it's a nice little oh, it's detail. It's beautiful. And so, next. Then he also uh, connected the 1939 Border right. Water Supply building with the 1950s Border Water Supply with this very beautiful uh, curving walkway, yeah. which is supported by two pylons, which very nicely have, uh, a, again, a Chinese, Japanese uh, element at the top. Yes. Right. Uh, the capital is very much a, like an elbow bracket. And I always, as a little kid, thought that that was the coolest thing in the world, and I wished I could walk on it. Oh, I've done it once. I was very happy. <laughs> I bet. Well, there was a, there was a sequence in Hawaii Five-0 mm -hmm. uh, about, I don't know, seven, eight years ago, in which there was a tracking shot of Dano and McGarrett walking on this. Oh, wow. And it was like it was supposed to be to the morgue or something. Okay, like yes. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. And you also notice on the top, that's pretty much uh, just simple... Uh, CMU block, but right. he's made it again to appear like a Chinese rickrack. Like on the front of the building. Yes, right. exactly. So yeah. and it's very good. And uh, yeah, yeah, you can't just go out on it. The doors are locked. Oh, I'm sure it's yeah, to get no, out. No, no, this around. is only for this and, is only for the elite. And and they say they they use it sometimes, but it's very few people that get to yeah. walk on it. Right, I know. 
But it's, it's a very nice touch, very, very modern, but still, oh, yes, reminders that, you know, we are Correct. part of our past. And it's well. also part of the whole complex, too. Right, exactly. And because of the element of that upper railing tying it to the building, mm -hmm. it isn't tacked on. Right, It's very exactly. much a part of it. Yes. Next. Yes, here there, is the marble you were yeah. talking about with the Board of Works. And this green marble, I'm sorry, I took these pictures on Sunday and the do doors were locked and yeah. I didn't have a chance to go yesterday. But uh, the green marble will follow around the corner and go Into inside the lobby. The lobby yeah. But it won't go far, but it's there to remind and you. And that's very much a modernist thing to do. Yes, and it's to very... to have that in, inside, outside continuity. Right. which is also a very much a Hawaii thing, to yeah, connect the inside and Yeah, because we live inside and outside right. very comfortably, correct. Then, right. then the interior also has a fair amount of koa, and mm -hmm. also a Julia May Fraser uh, mural, which shows the uh, history of water in Hawaii How on cool. the walls. So it's a very, very nice yeah. uh, celebration of water yeah. and the role it plays in our society. Correct, and beautifully done. Yes, next. And this will be the last little picture we have. Yeah. Uh, this is the back of the building, which yeah. nobody ever talks about or ever sees. Right. But I parked back there, it was Sunday, and uh, but I thought, this is handled rather well, too. It's handled very nicely, and in fact, it's got the same Brie Soleil consciousness right. because when the sun is coming towards the back of the building in the morning those vertical fins shade the interior just the way the other facade is shaded in the afternoon and that shows a real understanding of the placement of the building within its environment which is really remarkable and I think really admirable yes and I had the same experience last year when I went to take pictures of this building mm -hmm. and looked at the back carefully for the first time and said this is a lot less ornate, but it's really beautifully right. done. And and again, he, I think you can see he did. It is concrete. The, the yeah. spins on the back, but you can see he didn't just give you a slab. No, he did. Uh, there are vertical uh, vertical lines in it. Corrugate it more or yeah, less. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And so it and it, so it, so it has some character. It's going to have light and shadow playing yes. off it. Correct. And so it's 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 a very very well done building. And so, yeah. So those are the two main things I wanted to show you when Thank we're talking you. about mid-century architecture and, and modernism. Here is the man who is transitioning to that's that. That's exactly right. And that's uh, ex I was just going to say, he started out in a different mode, in a different style, transitioned into the modern style as time passed. And it's also remarkable, he was an old man when he designed this building the Board of Water Supply, and yet he was very much in the idiom of what was going on. Yes, exactly. Okay. And so, Thank you very much, Don Hibbert. Thank you very thank much, you. everybody, for watching uh, mm -hmm. Think Tech Hawaii this week. We will be back again next week with a Dokomomo, or no, it's going to be me next week. Yes. <laughs> it's going to be me next week with a really special presentation, and I hope that you will be tuning in to watch that. So until next time, everybody, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time on uh, Think Tech Hawaii. Bye.